Alright guys, uh, got a bit of work done on the B9 robot. Uh, as you can see here, the the brain section is uh, put together. Um, also, I've got the the tracks taken care of. All the seams are fixed up and everything. Well, as as good as they're going to get anyway. I've spent way too much time on those, and uh, I'm happy with it at the moment. So that's the way it's going to stay. Uh, so I've painted the tracks on those, I've still got to glue in the sides, they're just sitting there. Uh, I've glued in these top, uh, I forget what they're called, little hinges or something. And now I can start assembly from the bottom up. There's a few little details to, to paint on the rest of the pieces, but I'll sort of do them as I go. And uh, um, it's fine with this because I've got two, there's two gaps here so the wires can run through it, but the piece that goes above that. I uh, still need to drill holes in it for the wiring, but that's no big problem. Easy fix that one. Um, it has the option here of having the soil sampler if he wants it. Um, if he doesn't want it, you just push it back and close the door. So that's a nice easy fix for him there. Uh, the head assembly and brain. Uh, went together fairly fairly easy after I'd done all the modifying I needed to do. Uh, as you can see under here, there's that retainer pin that I was talking about. How it sits in there and it just glues up into it, and it, it's fine. Uh, I suppose what you could do is, you know, not glue this to the to the clear part behind, and you can have it swivel, I guess. But I don't even know if you'd, if the top part of it did swivel, so. I just glued it in place anyway, it makes it easier. You've got all this wiring, you don't want people turning it around and eventually you're going to end up have a short circuit somewhere. Uh, there's little finger lights inside, we're a little bit fiddly, but we've got them in check. Um, apart from that, everything else was painted before, so I was just sitting it, putting it in together. Uh, the instructions are a little bit incorrect uh, with regards to these um, the ears. As you can see, the one that sits vertically is on this side, and the one that sits horizontally is on that side. Well, the way it actually fits together is the opposite. <coughs> and that's how it is in most of the pictures. Um, like even on the box art, and actually if you look... Uh, I could be wrong, but I think I saw it. Well, you can see it right there, actually. You got the horizontal one there, and the vertical one on that side. Um, and actually, even in this build-up version, there. But anyway, uh, I was having a look online, and they actually change. Sometimes they're on the other side, sometimes on this side. So uh, these on the kit parts, they're actually keyed in to fit this way. So I mean, since it was that way in a few episodes, or most of the ones that I have seen, and even the the other people's uh, replicas that they had made, the full size ones, they were this way, so I thought I might as well just keep it that way. There was no need to, to modify the, the king at all. So, yeah, anyway, I just left it like that. Um, now, the good news is I've got all the wiring figured out. So, I'll light him up. Now, I don't know if it's going to really show up on this, but uh, yeah, you can kind of see the, uh, the finger lights lighting up. They're very subtle. The randomness in the brain section, this overhead light's not helping me much. Let me just slide it out the way for a bit. There we go. <coughs> yeah, you can see most of the lights there. And you got the top lights, which just randomly blink between the three of them. And then uh, we have the lights that are going to be hooked up to the torso, which is just you know, sort of a random bit pattern, very computer-like, which is blowing out the camera at the moment. But but yeah, it'll be something like that. Um, then we have the light that sits in the programming.
Bay, which is just a steady on light. And then we have uh, one of the lights that goes on the torso, which just blinks at a constant rate. And then there's another one, which I haven't connected yet, which uh, blinks at a con constant rate, but it, it kind of changes its speed, so it goes in sync and out of sync with this one. That's for, for all I can see anyway in the, in the photo, in the, uh, some of the reference videos and stuff. Um, so yeah, he's basically almost done. Um, I've just got uh, the next obstacle I've got to got across is the, uh, the soundboard, which I haven't really figured out exactly how I'm going to do things yet. I've tried a few different things and none of them are really working the way I want them to, so I'm still fiddling with that. Um, and like I said, I've got a few bits and pieces to work out. Um, there's the mouthpiece that needs to be lit up as he talks, so I've got to work that out with the soundboard. And I haven't painted those pieces yet, but yeah, I'm going to start, uh, you know, working out the the battery compartment here, which um, at the moment I'm just running on the double A's, so I cut down that the third battery. So there's only sorry, there's only two double A's, not three. So it's only running on a three volt system, which worked fine. Unless the uh, the soundboard I get needs to run on five, then I'll have to figure something out. But at the moment, it runs fine on the three. Um, <coughs> so yeah, the uh, the two double A's should fit in here just fine. I'm just got to figure out a little system how to uh, keep them in place and not fall, rattle around and stuff. I'm thinking maybe just some Velcro. Um, and then, yeah, as I mentioned, the soundboard would go on this side. And... And that's it. The wires need to be run up. So once I've painted all the little pieces on top, I can pretty much put everything together. And, and the soundboard, when it's ready, it's ready. And just wire it in. Alright, well that's it for now. I'll uh, keep you updated on what's going on. And I'll talk to you later.